This is a video for the forces topic in year eight and we're looking at friction today. Um, we've got to set up this board with different grits of sandpaper. So we've got 400 grit uh, sandpaper. This is really, really um, fine sandpaper, very soft, not a lot of friction there at all. 180, 100, 80, getting really rough now, and 40 over here, which is really, really rough sandpaper. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this block, and I've got different surfaces on this block, but I'm going to use this one because it drags across quite nicely. If you see this one drag across, it's a bit too, doesn't really grip it very well. So I'm going to use that surface along with my Newton meter, which you've seen before. And I've got two Newton meters here. I've got one with a scale going to one, and then I've got one with a scale going to 10. And I'm going to pull this, I'll start with this one, I think, Pull this Newton meter across, uh, pull, pull in the block across the sandpaper there, and I can read off on the Newton meter the force of the friction because the force pulling the block will be equal and opposite to the force of friction. And what the, the other thing I'm going to do at the same time is also change the weight which I um, subject to the block there as well. So I'm gonna apply a downward weight force, increasing that as I go. So I've got my grits of sandpaper here, and I've got my different masses to add on. And I know that a mass of 200 grams is equivalent to two Newtons of force pulling down. And I know that because if I lift that up, see there it's not quite reading it let's just uh, make sure that our Newton meter is calibrated to give us an accurate reading and then when I put that on there getting near enough not quite enough but trust me it is two Newtons the force of gravity pulling it down uh, gives a mass of 200 grams a two Newton force so we're going to have a go with that today, collect some results. Let's pull this down again so that we can see exactly what we're doing. So I'm going to start with the 40 grit, which is the roughest sandpaper. And I've got to keep doing it. It takes a few goes because you need to get it kind of giving a steady reading, not bouncing around. Okay, and I'm going to say that that is, uh, so with no mass on the top and on the 40 grit, that gave me um, 2.5 newtons of um, force to pull that along. Now I'll do that for the 80 grit. Again. Just keep trying it to make sure we're going to get an accurate reading. And that is 1.9. Move that across. I'll do one set of results, show you the change of mass, and then I think I'll just collect a set of results for us to use in class. So moving that one along, that's now 1.5. Again, much, much less now. Much, much smoother surface. That's giving me 0 0.7. And <clears throat> the final, the 400 grit, very, very smooth. Very small figures there. 0 0.4 Newtons. Okay, so that's the force of friction. In fact, I'll add that in there. Okay, so it's the force of friction and that's between the block and the sandpaper on the board and that's measured in newtons okay so i'm going to now show you how to develop this further we've got a pattern of results there and i can now add to that my 200 grams which is my two newtons of force and then i shall try again and this time that's really, really increased. 
that's now giving me a reading of five newtons. Okay, I'm going to continue that for this set of results and then come back to you. So I've collected all my results now. I've got a finished results table and let's take a look at it. Um, so we can see that we've got patterns in our data, um, both across, so as the grit becomes uh, finer, we see that the force of friction is less in yes, yes, yes. We have this slight situation here where if we look at that, 80 and 40 grit. This we can see is very a very. Uh, let me move it up. We can see that this 80 is a very um, rough surface, and where the 40 is so rough, and it would be brilliant for sanding things, and it feels really uh, rough to the touch. It's almost raised up, so as you drag that block over it, it doesn't seem to catch as much as it does on this surface. So it's kind of a bit of an anomaly in all of our sandpaper here that this one, although it's rough to the, the touch of my soft hand, when we actually drag a block over it, it kind of glides over the surface rather than getting caught on all of that gritty material, okay, compared to this one. So I think that explains why some of these on the 40 grit, when we look at the results here, are actually... Um, show less friction than the 80 grit okay so I think we've got some anomalies in our results here and I think when well, if we look from here onwards we can see some really good patterns again and we can see those patterns as we increase the mass as well the force of friction increases in all cases through the um, results and that's why I'm quite happy with those results um, not saying they're completely anomalous, they don't fit this pattern, but they still fit the pattern within increasing mass for this particular grit of sandpaper. So I'll leave those results there. Your teacher can pause that. The results will also be in the PowerPoint during the lesson. Hope you found that interesting and that you can now think of some different examples of where friction can be useful and also not as helpful. Thank you.